I'm Ryan, and I'd like to talk to you all about a better way to capture carbon dioxide. But before I dive into that, why would a carbon dioxide producer, a power plant or uh, an aluminum production facility want to capture CO2 in the first place? Well, one reason is sales. Um, CO2 is sold into a variety of industries, uh, including food and beverage, but really the largest market is enhanced oil recovery, where supercritical CO2 is used to um, dissolve, displace, and otherwise help capture about 20 to 30 percent of an oil well, which would otherwise go untapped by conventional means. So, of course, sales is one place where you could use this uh, CO2 that you capture. But really, when we're talking about carbon capture, the, the elephant in the room is regulation. We've all seen the global warming statistics, right? Um, CO2 levels have increased 25% in the atmosphere in the last 50 years. And with that, regulation looms large. So, um, in fact, multiple countries have already thought about uh, implementing carbon taxes, especially in, say, Europe. So, if I am a CO2 producer, a power plant, how would I now, if I wanted to capture the CO2 in my flue gas, go about doing it? Well, at the moment you would use something that looks like this, a thermal swing amine technology, where the flue gas gets exposed to an amine, which is this uh, blue-gray molecule here on the left. The amines like CO2, so they grab CO2 and they get this CO2-bound amine complex here to the right. Then comes the tough step, and that's the desorption, which uses something that looks like this. Basically, you heat up this CO2-bound amine, it drops its CO2, you get a pure amine stream, or sorry, a pure CO2 stream, and recover your amines to capture more CO2. Now, this is inefficient and expensive, and in the Hatton Group, we think we have a better way, an efficient one, an electrochemical method that we call EMAR, or electrochemically mediated amine recovery. And what happens here is instead of using this heating process, we use an electrochemical process where on one side of an electrochemical cell, which looks a lot like this, we supply the amine-bound CO2 with something that it likes more, copper. And so the amines grab the copper, they let go of the CO2, we get the CO2 bound, or we get the CO2 freed up, and then on the other side of an electrochemical cell, the copper is removed. So it's worth pointing out that Electrochemical means we apply voltage. We, we need power, but we don't need anything else. So this is, as it turns out, a lot more efficient. And how would it look in practice? Well, we would take some feed gas, let's say flue gas from our power plant. We would expose it to the amines in an absorber, like the thing shown on the left. Then that amine-bound CO2 would travel to the EMAR desorber, where, of course, the CO2 would be released and the amines would be refreshed. Um, so it's important to note here the temperature, right? The whole system runs at less than 60 degrees C. That's the same temperature that flue gas is. So that's to say there are no additional utilities required, right? Uh, we just need power. So it, it's quite literally plug and play. Let's compare that in, to instead the thermal swing amine technology where we have the same absorber, but then we go to this thermal desorber, which you'll notice runs really hot, above 110 degrees C. That means we need process steam, we need cooling water. And while cooling water may be available, someplace you'd like to capture carbon dioxide, process steam probably is not. So in addition to the capital expenses associated with the absorber, and the desorber, now you have to build a boiler to provide your process steam, which serves to drastically increase the capital. So all told, uh, the economics come out to about this. The incumbent technology, this thermal swing amine technology shown on the right, costs about 60 to $80 per met ton CO2 captured. Whereas our technology, this EMAR-based te technology, will run about $20 to $35 per met ton of CO2 captured. That's below the DOE's established uh, targets for CO2 capture. Um, so we've demonstrated in the Hatton Lab that this works on a lab scale. And, and I'm showing right here an idealized version of the EMAR system on the left, and uh, one of a number of generations of EMAR cells 
that we've actually built in the lab on the right. And it works like this. On one side, we have an electrode, the anode, where um, the CO2 is released. And on the other side, the cathode, we have um, another electrode where we pull out the copper. Between the two goes a membrane before everything gets buttoned up. And you can see on the sides where we provide that positive and, and negative voltage to get the uh, CO2 released. And we've demonstrated in the lab that by applying a current, we can selectively capture carbon dioxide. So one of the really nice things about a system like this is how it scales. Electrochemical systems get to scale in parallel. That's to say, if I want to capture more CO2, I simply stack together more EMR cells. And you can even take those stacks and stack them in, into even more. Uh, this serves to significantly de-risk the technology. Right? Because as long as it's demonstrated on a pilot scale that it works, we can be reasonably certain that it will work on a commercial scale because we simply repeat the pilot scale unit over and over. So this idea has started to get some traction. It started with an ARPA-E grant back in 2010 and has had a variety of funding sources since then, and up to and including uh, the Deshpande Center. In addition, we've been in the news lately. Uh, the Boston Globe ran a story on us. We were in the MIT Tech Review. And just yesterday, actually, I saw someone made a YouTube video talking about our technology and how it's uh, implemented. So there's some excitement about the technology. And if you're excited about it as well, I'd love to talk with you all uh, at the poster. Thank you. <laughs>